It allows me to see things that a lot of people don't get to see. I get to go into abandoned buildings. If I go to a historic site and I tell them, oh, I'm a preservationist, they're like, oh, do you want to see the places we don't take normal people? There's almost an inside conversation that's happening whenever you look at architecture, uh, especially historic architecture, that most people aren't aware of. I'm Randy Greaves, I'm the Historic Preservationist for the Unified Government and the Planning and Urban Design Department. So Sour Castle is one of the many gems that Kansas City, Kansas has in Wyandotte County. It's an Italianate Renaissance building. Uh, it's long been in the public eye. A lot of people are very passionate about it. Sour Castle was built in 1871. So at that time, Kansas was only a state for 10 years. Solicited on the Kansas National Register, the Kansas State Register, in 1977, the first year the register came out. Uh, so this building has a lot of history to the local community. It's been around a long time. Uh, it was built by Anthony Sauer in 1871, a German immigrant who moved to the United States in the 1860s to try to make his fortune. So originally started off in New York and moved here in '68. Founded a few businesses, a tannery, imported seeds, and then built the castle on 64 acres and started a vineyard. So there are rumors that this house is haunted. So in the tower there, the story goes that after Anthony Sauer's death, his second wife was widowed and in her grief hung herself from the tower. Uh, so it's said that her spirit sometimes wanders these, this building to this day. This would have been a system of bells. So somebody on some floor needs something, they can ring their bell. Then the house servant, wherever they may be, can hear it. And this is the, what they would take to go up to the next floor. It's a lot narrow, more narrow. It's not as nice as the grand staircase because it's not meant for everybody. Oh, if you look there, that is an old electrical system uh, where just copper wires used to run from point to point along the ceiling. Uh, you don't see those much anymore. So it's a lot cooler down here. The stone on the walls probably came from local quarries, locally sourced. Other than this stone, everything else was shipped in from elsewhere. St. Louis, uh, some of the marbles from Italy that remained. The lighting fixtures were from St. Louis. Uh, a lot of the workers even were shipped here from St. Louis for their expertise in this kind of building. This would have been a coal furnace to heat the house. Steam, yeah, it was a steam turbine, probably burned coal. Even this little piece is historic, so this has probably been here since the 1860s. A copy of Hamlet. 1959. Random things like that are a mainstay of historic buildings. You'll just come across the weirdest things that you would never have expected to have been left behind. But even, even as bad a condition as this house is, we've seen a lot of damage, a lot of deterioration. It's not too far to save. All it takes is somebody that cares enough 
that's willing to put in the time and the effort. And with historic tax credits, it can get back to up to 45% of the cost of fixing this place back to the pocket of the building owner. There's no project that's too big. All of this would have been terraced vineyards that Sauer would have grown grapes to make wine on. Uh, he had 64 acres of land that he operated. Now the castle sits on just four. So now we're in the tower itself. This is where it gets really narrow. This is the part of the building that's most endangered right now. Here we have a giant hole in the side of the tower where the brick has fallen off. Uh, and these are an attempt to stabilize the tower until the review process can be finished, the tax credits can be obtained, and the money to get this work done can come in. Um, it, it looks bad, but it's not nearly too late to save what's here. First, you have to uh, familiarize yourself with historic architecture. This is an Italianate building. What makes it an Italianate building? It's a beautiful example of that, and we can highlight some of those features. But once you know what it's supposed to look like, you have to study materials and degradation. So a lot of my study was how does plaster dissolve? How does brick break down? What happens to stone if it gets too much water in it? That kind of stuff. Because once you understand how it degrades, you can understand how to stop it. And once you understand the architecture, you understand how to fix it. One thing about this older wood is that it's much more dense than the wood we're used to nowadays uh, because the trees took longer to grow. We weren't doing industrial farming on a massive scale. So they're a lot more solid. They've got a lot more mass and density to them. They're a lot stronger, which is why wood, historic wood windows and these historic wooden floors survive so long and take so much of a beating. These right here, here's some. These are cut nails. They would have been forged by a local blacksmith uh, around the time of its construction. I mean, these came from Kansas City. There used to be a window right here. So if you look at the brick, you've got brick longwise, You've got soldiered brick going across the row. But if you look here, it's soldiered, turned on its side, and it's got an arch to it. And there's a clear change in the brick structure here and here, which is a good sign that there used to be a window on this wall. I cannot wait to come through that door someday and see the work that's been done here. And we're hoping soon to see some new life brought to it. Uh, a lot of that's going to be thanks to some hard work done by local organizations and the tax incentives brought out through the historic tax credits. Those credits are going to be what makes this project feasible. We're very excited to see what happens there.